All right, today's the first day of class, and this is Micro 200930. And my name is Professor Donald R. Hicks, and I'm your teacher. And let's just review a few things that we've already talked about today. If you are officially on the beautiful yellow roll sheet, sign your name where it says sign. And if you, if a person does not show up by 3 o'clock, one hour into this class, I will exclude them, drop them, and give the people that are waiting to add that seat. Uh, how will I do the ads? Well, there is an, a waiting list, ad list here that is going around which already has more number of people on it than there are already registered. Uh, <laughs> what we will do is at somewhere a little after 3.30, I will put little numbers in a hat and we will draw the numbers. And I will add the number of seats that people did not show up, plus about six. And those six will be hanging from the rafters and chandeliers and, <laughs> you know, making themselves a nuisance. No, they'll be along the side and here at the front and they will just fill in and will all be patient and kind and nice. And why will we be kind and nice? Because someday you're going to be in the same hole. And you're going to need someone to put up with the fact that it's a little overcrowded at the beginning because you couldn't get a place and you really need to take it this, that particular term. term. So uh, you're going to be nice Everybody's going to be nice to everybody because I just require that. And if you can't be nice, I want you to fake it. <laughs> yes. As my mother always said when she looked at us and she made these great plans, she'd look at me and we, my sister and I'd be grumbling or whatever. We want to be with the family. She'd say, have fun, damn it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have be nice, darn it. And we're going to make room for as many people as we can possibly do it because a lot of people don't realize how difficult the class is and remember it's not difficult in intelligence it's difficult in the amount of material and the amount of stuff you have to do and the amount of material we have to cover that is unlike any material you've ever had before if you had biology in high school you are like recently you are like way up because we have to basically teach the first semester of chemistry and the first semester of biology before we even begin microbiology. So you'll be a little bit on a head start and it'll be helpful for you, but it goes kind of slow at the beginning and people get used to that. And then it is bam, 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 <laughs> final exam day. So, slow at the beginning till we get everybody caught up, and then it feels like you've been raped six times in a row <laughs> within a 24-hour period, and then somebody slapped you. So it's really, really, really fast-paced at the end because everybody's caught up, and we're moving at the rate of one and a half chapters a week. We have to cover 18 chapters in 16 weeks. So it's quite, quite I, I always try to scare the heck out of everybody so that they know that at the beginning this very slow pace will not be maintained because by the time we take the first major exam, it's going to be a major exam every 10 days. And each major exam covers seven chapters. So don't be caught thinking, oh, gee, microbes, how oh, easy. Listen, all I have to do is sit there and absorb it. It goes so slow. It does at the beginning. So anyway, let's talk about a lot of things. You guys, you don't have a seat or anything. Let's find out what we can do for you. Hmm. How about you people that are on the sides over here? Can you just sort of move about this far from each other and let other people sort of crouch on that countertop so that they can get their legs? You guys can hang on that countertop. 
my countertops are clean as of this week. All right, so excuse me while I find the ad slips that I stole. <laughs> Very hard to find those. You have to know the right. <laughs> Don't let anybody see you waving them around or some other teacher will knock you down and grab a couple. <laughs> All right, so anyway, let's get started with some of the most important things, like are you in the right place? 90% of my students are going to nursing school, and they're going to be applying to the L.A. Community College District Nursing Schools, or County USC. If you're going to do that, and that's your plan, you're in the right place. If you intend to go to USC, Mount St. Mary's, other private schools, Lindell College, Pasadena City College, Santa Monica uh, Community College, or Santa Monica College, and use this microbiology, it won't work. Uh, this microbiology does not require that you have had a college chemistry. All of their nursing programs require a college chemistry. So, if you're going to go to the University of California, UCLA, or any other University of California campus, if you're going to University of Oregon, uh, UAB, um, University of Maryland, any East Coast college, any major university, and you're going to try to transfer this, it will not transfer. It is not usable outside the tech community college system. In other words, it is considered a technical school uh, prerequisite for nursing school, not a university or college sophomore level course. So, make sure you're in the right place. If you have any doubt, wherever you intend to apply, call them up and ask them which microbiology class you should take. Do not go by the title of the course. The title doesn't matter. Different colleges have different titles. Some people call it Survey of Microbiology. Some people call it Introduction to Microbiology. Some people call it General and Introductory Microbiology. None of that matters squat. The word microbiology must be in the title, and it must have a prerequisite of chemistry, a college chemistry and usually a college biology, like biology three, to transfer to university, private school, or to uh, professional programs like med school, or pre-dent, or pre-med, or physical therapy, or dental hygiene at another university or college. Uh, Mount St. Mary's will let you take this class plus the help session, which is called Micro 40. It's a one semester extra unit of lab so that you meet their requirement, which is five semester hours. This is four. So if your college requires a five semester uh, microbiology class with lab, you must take the microbiology for help session that comes with this. So we have all kinds of combinations you can do to get it right. Now let me tell you some bad news. You thought that was bad news. The bad news is most, let's say, let me put it this way. I'm always so nice. <laughs> the worst, most useless form of individual on a college campus is called an advisor. 90% <laughs> of the time, they have no clue. They do not know what the current recommendations are for where you want to transfer. They do not really care what class should come first, so they tell you a class that's offered every term to take, when the prerequisite for one you must take next term is only offered this term, and they didn't tell you about it. And you're now wasted a year. So, like medicine, your health is your own responsibility. Your course requirements are your own responsibility. You can harass your advisor. You can say, I know better. 
I have it in written that this is what my transfer requirements are, and this is the class I'm supposed to take. But do not just sit there and be a little mouse and take their recommendation without checking things out. Because, sort of like my mom, she's 88. I sent her home yesterday. She came to spend like a month with me. And she said, I've got a problem with my ear. It itches all the time out here and it's brown. And I said, did you make a doctor's appointment? And she said, yes. And I said, what did the doctor say? And she said, nothing. She said, the doctor said nothing. And I said, so that when you told the doctor about it, he, he said, said nothing. She said, no, I didn't tell the doctor. His job is to find it. <laughs> I'm not going to bring it up. Something terrible might be wrong. <laughs> well, guess what? If you don't tell them, they don't really look anymore. If you watch, you get like 10 minutes with them, and they're reading paperwork the whole time. So it's the same thing in college now. Your prerequisites and the courses you take and the order you must take them are really your responsibility to dig up and find out. So make sure you're in the right class. Micro One, which is the one that does transfer everywhere in the world. If you want to go to Johns Hopkins, and by the way, we've had students transfer to Johns Hopkins, the best in the world, you should be in Micro One, which is at 5.15 till 10 o'clock. It has a chemistry request prerequisite, any college chemistry is the prereq, and it is five semester hours, and it transfers to any private school, any program, any college, anywhere in the world. It is a sophomore plus, meaning a little bit above sophomore, a little bit below junior level class. So, your choice. Make sure you're in the right one. Anyone have a question about that? Yeah? Just a quick question about the chemistry, the college chemistry. Is there like an expiration date? <laughs> How like you took it a while ago? Officially, yes. In reality, no. Uh, officially, they have something like a five-year yeah. limitation. But all you have to do is get uh, my ad slip and put in a petition, and they'll let you. Oh, really? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Don't know it, but okay. Um, Which, by the way, would you email me it? Because I'd like yes, to know about it. Yes. Um, I, on there it says that the micro 20 applies um, for like uh, Cal State schools and stuff. Cal State it does. Oh, it does. But you have to take the micro 40 extra hour of lab. Okay. It's micro 40? Yes. yes. It's micro 40, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. But you just take okay. that in addition to this. We take 20 plus 40. No big deal. Yep. Your question. Um, same thing, it's, it's with the what Cal State will. Um, it also says for UCLA as well. I just checked. I don't know why. It's probably wrong. <laughs> okay. As of the last term, I had a big stink with a couple of students on that. Okay. But if I take this class and then chemistry, that would be fine for Santa Monica, is it right? No. Santa Monica requires that you take the higher level class after the chemistry. You need to call them and check. Make sure. Because in Valley College, you told me you could take this one first here. Valley's a part of our system, Santa Monica. Right, well, they said for Santa Monica, then, then take the chemistry. They. So oh. call them and check. Okay. Yes. <laughs> call the place you're going to go. Got it. But Santa Monica is the considered the best community college in California and transfers more universities than any other college in the world. And it has much higher requirements. Other questions? Did everyone sign the ad slip, uh, ad wish list that wanted to? Here. Um, is there anybody that wants to be added to Micro One? You can go ahead and sign in for Micro One. You can stay today, pick up the Micro. You can stay in this introduction because it's going to be the same for both. But. Um, It's a five semester hour that requires a 
and this is the tiny little menu. And if you went, if you knew anything about my old blog site, the menu had about 60 items on it. So this is a whole lot simpler. And the way the menu is organized is by the evaluation processes in the class. So let's talk a little bit about the evaluation processes in the class. So your grade is going to be a weighted average. And once that weighted average is figured out, 90 is an A, 80 is a B, 70 is a C. I don't like to get things low in that. I usually ask people to drop. All right, so what's a weighted average? That means that every grade you get in here is going to be a percent out of 100. So if you have a test, it's going to come back 77 on it. So that's the percent that you have. So what are our categories in this class? First category is the three major exams. And the three major exams are Lab Practical 1, which we're going to start on today. Lab Practical 1, and it actually is a practical. Uh, it's going to be over a chapter, the very first chapter we're going to cover, chapter 3, the microscope, the parts, the functions, the kinds, uh, how to focus it, how to care for it, uh, what is the theory behind its use and function. That's all lecture. Then we're going to learn how to uh, store it, take care of it, over there is where we have our microscopes. Uh, when I arrived here, the microscopes were older than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our college president came up and said, we're going to start a nursing school because LACC was famous for a great nursing school until one of those, you know, uh, educational trends hit. And the trend that hit in the 70s was every community college in the district would specialize and they would be given this specialization and if you wanted to be specialized in agriculture you went to Pierce. Agriculture in Los Angeles? <laughs> if you wanted to do TV, radio, and film, and art, you went to City. If you wanted to do technical school programs like nursing, you went downtown to trade tech. Well, guess what? In Los Angeles, people don't go where the program are. They go to where the college nearest their work or where they live. And so the whole system didn't work. So back in the 90s, the district decided in its great wisdom to let any college that could do a good job at certain majors do it. We have five hospitals within four blocks, some of the best ones in the world. We partnered with them and brought back our nursing school, which is great. Bad news, we didn't have any equipment or anything else because we'd gotten rid of it. So the, t the president came in and said, Don, we're bringing the uh, micro class back in as a requirement, and so you'll have more than two sections of micro. We now have eight, we once had 12. And what do you need? And I said, well, gee, the microscopes, I, I was born in 1951, and the microscopes were bought in 1947. And they don't even make them anymore, so each time one dies, we kill another one for parts. So uh, we got the best microscopes that can be made or bought in the world. USC Medical School uses them. UCLA uses them. They're called the Leica DME, and they are $2,000 a piece. And that's without any of the special adaptations we have. So, they are extremely precious, and every microscope has a fault, and one of the faults that all of them have is if they're not cleaned daily, the lenses degrade. 
So we are going to be taking care of these microscopes very well, and that's taught in this first lab practical how to properly care for and store the microscopes so they last hopefully to your children come here. <laughs> All right, so in lab practical one, it's the how to handle microbes safely in the laboratory, how to uh, grow microbes and keep them in their place. Remember, what's anybody know what the definition of a weed is? Did you know a rose can be a weed? If it's growing in the middle of your driveway, it's a weed. A plant out of place is a weed. A microbe out of place is a contamination. So the process of keeping microbes where you want them to, do, to be in pure or mixed cultures is called aseptic or sterile technique. So we'll be teaching that. We'll be teaching how to handle them so they don't bother you and you don't give them yours. You know that you are a walking microbial factory. There are more microbes living in you and on you than there are stars in the universe. These that, of course, if you're not sick, all of these are helpful to us and out-compete or the ones that live on our skin uh, don't allow the ones that cause disease to live there because they out-compete them and squeeze them out or starve them because they're perfectly adapted to us over hundreds of thousands of years. So we're going to learn how to protect ourselves from microbes, how to prevent microbes on us from getting to other people or in our cultures or what we're working from, how to prevent anything in the cultures from getting in us. And one of the things you're going to learn on this first day is that nothing we work with will make you sick. Do not be that person. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. The one that calls me on my private line at 3 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> Saturday morning. Dr. Hicks, I was in that micro 40 yesterday. We were having an E. coli. And I think that E. coli got all over my fingers. And when I got home, my kids, they're throwing up. Shit never went. They got a 108 degree fever. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I got your E. coli and I brought it home. One, E. coli is not dangerous. There's only one form created by man that is toxic. You have it on your fingers right now, you nasty little pig. <laughs> you didn't wash your hands after you went to the potty. Or, if you did wash nicely, the person before you didn't and handled the same doorknob. Yeah. It's growing in you and on you. <laughs> if it didn't grow in your colon, you couldn't process vitamin K, your you know, things wouldn't move through in a smooth manner, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and so the microbes that we work with are harmless. They are selected to look like, stain like, grow like, and appear in every way, except for one or two tiny little differences, like pathogens that make humans sick but none of the ones we work with will make a normal person in, that, in normal health ill. Now, if you're already sick, or you have cancer, or you're under radiation therapy, anything in the environment can make you sick, including our microbes. So if you do have a specific health problem, like you're on steroid therapy, you're on chemo, uh, you have radiation therapy, you have an immune dysfunction, or you have a T cell count below 200, you need to tell me because there's one or two microbes we don't want you to be handled. But generally speaking, everything we handle, you can eat. Now, the only thing about these microbes that you'll be handling is they are pathogens of, dog, of uh, birds, or of reptiles, or of cows. Anybody in here a bird? <laughs> Any reptiles? Not that your wife or husband has called you a snake. Are you really a snake? Any cows? Moo? Okay. Then these things will not make you sick. Okay? So, how to handle microbes properly. Then, we're going to attach microbes to a clear piece of glass called a microscope slide in a manner that they still retain their shape and normal appearance. And then we're going to stain them to get their chemical characteristics, learn to focus them under the microscope, and read the stains.
So what is Lab Practical 1? You're going to come in and have a hundred multiple choice questions over the chapter on the microscope. Sorry, don't forget to put it on vibrate. Um, hundred questions over, multiple choice questions and maybe a short essay, a uh, short answer, not a real essay, on the chapter three and theory of staining and the microscope and how to handle it and all that. And then I'm going to hand you a surprise microbe. In a tube. And you are going to take 10 clean microscope slides, attach the microbes to the slide, which is called making a smear, stain them with the three major stains in microbiology from memory, focus them perfectly, raise your hand, and say, I have a known number six. I did the gram stain. It is a gram positive rod because it's stained purple, and gram-positive microbes have a thick cell wall and retain the primary color you put on them, which is crystal violet or purple. I will look through the microscope. If it has a nice purple organism with a white background, you will get 100% on that and move on and do the next stain, and then the third stain. So, Lab Practical 1, which is about week 5, you're going to have a lab practical that's going to be one-third multiple choice. One-third, I give you a micro, then you give me three perfect stains. And by the way, you have the entire period to do this, so you'll have plenty of time. And then I will put up photographs of microbes from your classroom, because you'll get extra points for taking pictures of your own stains, and you will interpret them. You'll say, oh, yes, I remember that one. You don't have to tell me the name. You just have to tell me what's its shape. Is it positive or negative? And is it, um, hold it, is it a rod or a coxy? Is it positive or negative? And that's it from the picture. So those three components, each one being a third, will equal your lab practical one score. So one third from the multiple choice, one third from doing the three stains on a unknown microbe, and one-third from recognizing pictures of the stains we did in class. And that will be your first major exam. And until then, it will be very, very slow. Because what we're going to do in class is we're going to spend about two and a half full class periods going over the lecture. Then we're going to get up the microscope, and I'm going to teach you how to handle it and how to focus it. Then we're going to learn how to glue microbes to the slides and make some smears and do some simple stains. Then we're going to spend one whole period on the gram stain, one whole period on the acid fast stain, and one whole period, you know what a whole period is, right, from two to five, on the uh, endospore stain. Then we're going to have a uh, period where you can do any of them and Every stain that you do, I will look at. I'm not one of those teachers that sit in a circle, children. You get chapter one, read it to each other, and make some questions out while I sit on my ass at the front of the room and collect my salary. <laughs> you don't go out of here unless you know it. And guess what? You've just got the best teacher here. I know. I have no problem with ego. <laughs> you got the best teacher here because here's what I do. I make sure you don't fail. All you have to do is try. You have to keep trying, trying and trying and trying. And I will look at every slide and tell you what you did wrong and how you can fix it. And then I will let you do it again. I do not scream at you. I do not say, oh my God, that's a silly thing you do it! <laughs>
And I, in that period, I have instructor help session where I come in and you have all the time in the world to make up a lab or to get personal help. You don't know how long it took me to learn how to focus a microscope. Five hours in three labs, my teacher tried to teach me how to focus a microscope. And I still didn't get it. Although now I've learned and I have a lot of little tricks to show you that make it easy. I had to come and get special help. That's what this is for. If you couldn't get the gram stain in the three hours we did in class, don't worry. If you signed up for Micro 40, you can come and practice and I will stand there and we will go over every step and find out what it is you're doing wrong. And you will do it until you get it right. Or I die, or you die. <laughs> Whatever comes first. So the wonderful thing about my Micro 40 is what we do in the lab. You get to come back and practice before the lab practical and have personal help. And the day before, the weekend before the lab practical, I have all afternoon on a Friday and all, hold it, all afternoon on a Saturday because it's a football game. <laughs> and all morning on a Friday. And I let anybody that want, that's in Micro 40, because you can't come unless you're rich for Micro 40 because of liability. What if you cut your throat? What am I going to do? He wasn't supposed to be in here. You know, that kind of thing. But I have five hours on Sat Friday and five hours on Saturday where you come and practice till you're near death. Right? She knows. Isn't that true? <laughs> and guess what? You know what my scores on Lab Practical 1 are? Multiple choice. People seem to skip it all the time and not practice it. And it usually runs about 78 to 85. Doing the actual staining and focusing and, and explaining it to me, 99%. And uh, reviewing the uh, pictures, around 85 to 95%. So this is the only thing that I really have to get people to do a little bit more is to study the lecture notes a little bit more for the multiple choice. And <coughs> I have been to college for a long, long time. <coughs> I started college in 1969. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your mother wasn't born. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I didn't come out with my, let's see, I went six years to a four-year program. Guess where I went? Auburn. You'll see it everywhere. And do, do you have a question? Uh, no, I'm oh, are you uh, registered yes. already? Who's got the registered list? The one with the yellow. Make sure you sign and see if you can find an empty seat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I liked college so much that I went six years for a four-year program. In fact, I'd still be in my BS right now if my parents hadn't said, my father hadn't come to me and said, what's your major? <laughs> And I said, I'm undeclared. I said, so you're a sixth year undeclared senior with 323 semester hours when it only takes 129 to graduate. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I like school. <laughs> he said, and you're piling up that college loan debt. Because he wasn't helping me except for like, you know, emergency kind of thing. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, your mother and I have been talking and we think it's a bit embarrassing. So don't come home again until you can tell us you're graduating. So I graduated the next term. <laughs> How? I opened my transcript. I opened the college catalog, whatever I had the most of. <laughs> that was my major. <laughs> So I have a Bachelor's of Science in Animal Husbandry at Auburn <laughs> University. You know what animal husbandry is? What is it? Efficiently growing cows, pigs, chickens, horses, and sheep. Do I, what can you do with a BS in Animal Husbandry? You can grow these animals better on your family farm, but we didn't own a farm. <laughs> You can work in a meat packing plant, grading meat. I tried it. Nasty. 
<laughs> Two years later, my father came to me at my incredible place of business because I thought I was going to get a $60,000 a year job, or a company Mercedes Benz and three weeks vacation. And I was a security guard. <laughs> yep. On the 11 to 7 ship, shift in Miami, throwing the Miami Herald on Sunday mornings at 3 a.m. And he said, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't need a degree from a major university to be a security guard. And I said, that's the best job I could get. And he said, your mother and I have been talking. <laughs> you know that's always very bad. <laughs> We don't want them to talk about us. <laughs> and he said, there is only one answer when you can't get a better job and you hate what you're doing. More education. So you will go and be a security guard at night and you will go to morning classes at university and your mother and I will pay the first semester. That's my favorite word. Mm -hmm. So, I went to Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton, and I walked in, and I went to the advisor. <laughs> and I sat down, and he said, how can I help you? And I said, I'd like to get a master's degree in microbiology. And he said, why microbiology? And I said, because I made A's in microbiology. I didn't tell him those were the only A's. I made one in general, intro, immunology, dairy micro, sewage micro, food micro. Wow. And he said, well, we have a master's in microbiology here. Uh, did you graduate from accredited university? I said, yes, I graduated from Auburn. He said, did you take the GRE? And I said, yes, I, get, I made um, it was 780 or something like that. And he said, oh, that's great. He said, okay, let me see your transcript. Did I mention that I majored in drinking football games? going to parties, fraternity parties. I went to class at least twice a week. And in those days, because all of your uh, tuition pay, paid the fees, they didn't keep attendance. All you had to do was to show up for the exams. So that's what I did. I got friends to get the notes, or I went to the fraternity houses and got the old test and old notes, and I studied them, and I made a C average. <laughs> so he started reading out my grades. He said, well, this is fascinating. My goodness, you have over 300 semester hours. <laughs> he said, principles of private flight. Why did you take flying an airplane? And I said, I thought it was interesting. C. He goes through and he says, C, 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 W, W, W. I said, yeah, I wasn't the one to study as much as I D, I said, I didn't like that class. <laughs> C, 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 F, I just didn't attend that one. C, 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 D, B, A, 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 B, D, 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 C, C, C. He says, this is amazing. 300 semester hours and you have a C average by one one thousandth of a point. I said, yes, C, good. Doesn't it say that? Mm -hmm. It says, A, excellent, B, superior, C, good. He says, but C is not good enough for graduate school. I said, what do you mean? He says, you can't get into graduate school with a C average. I said, what do I do? He says, everything you made a C or below in, you have to take over. Aww. I said, that's 300 hours? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be here for years. And he says, yes, have a nice day. Thank you for coming to Florida Atlantic University. So I walked out, and this woman, you know, you know those movies where they have the hero and this beam of light from heaven comes down, God speaks, and doves fly out of his booty or whatever. Yeah. Okay, I had one of those moments. It really didn't happen, but it was like that. This woman came up to me and whispered in my ear and shoved a card in my hand and said, if you're really serious and you've grown up, I might can help you. Read my card. On the back she'd read, written, read page 333 in the graduate catalog. 
So I got outside and I read the catalog and it said any person that's graduated from an accredited college has taken the GRE and made it acceptable is a citizen of the state of Florida and paid their fees can take any uh, course at this university with permission of the instructor. So I made an appointment with her and she said, are you serious? Have you grown up? And I said, you have no idea what being a security guard will do. <laughs> <laughs> I have really grown up. And she said, do you have a plan to study? She said, and I said, do you know what I do? I sit at a bank of computers that has a screen on every door in the condominium and I write down Mr. Jones and Bimbo in door 3, 12 a.m. Bimbo leaves at 1.30 a.m. That's all I did. And I check the doors to make sure they lock and the buzzers so I can study while I'm working. She said, sounds like a good plan. Got enough money? Said my parents are going to pay the first semester, and I got room to pay to borrow all my student loans, so more student loans. She said, okay, then what do you want to do? And I said micro, and she said okay. Here's the list for masters in micro. The first class is taught by James X. Hartman. I'll never forget his name. As long as I live, do you know people that have changed your life? That man changed my life. She said, get a haircut, wear a suit and tie, I think that's the last time I ever wore one, and go to him and sell him on you. You're a product. Now you've got to sell it because you know what the product is. I'm going to tell a little white lie, which by the way I do tell little white lies too, like if you pass my class and you want a recommendation, I will say you're either Jesus Christ or Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing you have ever done wrong. So anyway, she called and said, this is a family friend. Give him a chance to sell himself. I believe he's serious. And I went in and got the appointment. And I walked in the door. He didn't even offer me a seat to sit down. So I knew this was going to be bad. And he was reading. And he said, Mr. Hicks? And I said, yes, sir. And he says, hmm. I'm just standing here. Looks up at you and says, The answer is no. You don't belong here. This class only has 10 students. It costs the state of Florida a lot of money. The lab is outrageously expensive. We use radioactive isotopes, all kinds of things. You don't belong here. Everyone else studied their butt off and they have A's and B's. You have a C average. Why should I let you in this class? And I said, Because everybody makes a mistake. And sometimes in life, people give you a second chance, and you don't squander them. And I will not fail. I will do anything to succeed in this class. I'm a security guard. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought, and he thought, and he says, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a little game here. I'm going to sign you in. I'm going to let you take this class. I will treat you like everybody else. I won't tell them you're a dumbass and shouldn't be there. <laughs> I'll give you a lab partner. I'll answer just as many questions from you as anyone else. I'll give you exactly the same amount of help as I give every other student. And when you begin flunking out, I'll wave bye-bye. Because I don't think you can do it. So bad I was so angry. And I aced it. He believed in me. He talked to the next professor, did the same thing, took everything through my entire master's program. He became my major advisor. I did my research. I did my thesis. I defended it orally, and, and he was on my committee. And then I was done. They said, I've never been admitted to graduate school. So my mother said, don't do it. But I did it. I went back to the very same counselor. <laughs> I made an appointment. And I sat out. He says, how can I help you? I said, I want to get a master's in microbiology. He says, ooh, don't I remember you? Aren't you Mr. WF? And I said, my name's Don Hicks. And yes, you do remember me from about three years ago. But I have a 3.86 average out of four. I made all A's 
except for one B. In graduate school, I have completed all the requirements of the state of Florida for a master's in microbiology, and I'd like my degree, please. Now, what should he have said? My goodness, I can't believe you did that. That is great. Good for you. You know what he said? You can't do that. There's got to be a rule against that somewhere. <laughs> there wasn't. So, when you look at my transcript, it says, Admitted to graduate school, March the 17th, 1977. Graduated from, gra uh, from a master's with a master's of science in microbiology, March the 17th, 1977. <laughs> I was admitted and graduated on the same day. <laughs> Which is very hard to explain and people can cheat, lie, and steal, but I didn't. And the reason I'm telling you this was, I told you I had an email, right? <laughs> no, the reason I'm telling you is my philosophy of education is I took what that man did for me, and that's what I'm going to do for you. You are not, if you stick at it, keep up, keep plotting, keep trying, attend every day, and work at it, and email me, and take Micro 40 and do all the things that are necessary, I will kick, grab you by the nape of your neck, or by your long hair, and drag you, kicking and screaming, through this class, which is very lengthy, but not hard, to getting an A or a B. And if you're close to getting a C or a D or an F, I will ask you to take a 9 and retake it. Or drop it before it hurts your record. I will not give up on you if you don't give up on yourself. And we will do everything over and over and over again until either you die or I die and you notice I'm still here. <laughs> so, my philosophy is the community college system is set up for people like me. People who messed up. People who got pregnant in after high school and, you know, you ever notice that the people in your high school that were elected most likely to succeed or the geniuses, you know what they're doing? Check out boy at Rouse. Yeah. Or Vaughn. Or they got seven kids and they're living on Section 8. That, those are the people that had it easy because they were so smart, everything came easy to them. It's the people who just won't give up. That when something gets in their way, they find a, a detour around it and keep plugging and get there and get where they're going. I don't care if this English is not your first language. Fine. I grew up in South America. I will help you. You will be fine if you believe me, trust me, and follow what I tell you to do. And you'll be fine. You have a great recommendation. And don't tell me there isn't successes here because one of my students who was, the good news is, in the same class, three of them married their lab partners. <laughs> Two of them are still together. <laughs> One of, all of them went to nursing school and were successful. One of them, the one that got divorced, her first year out of nursing school, she made $110,000 because she didn't have a husband, she might as well work. <laughs> so she took the night shifts and the holidays and the double time and all that. And guess what? She's now professor here, teaching in our nursing school. So. Everybody can do it. Anyone can do it. So I want you to do it. Anyway, after my master's program, I applied all over the United States, and we were in that little tiny thing called a recession. We wouldn't know what that is. <laughs> and uh, there were no jobs. I applied 600 places. I sent out applications. And I end up with three choices to interview at. A place in Kansas, which by the time I got there, for the interview had already decided. And a place in uh, Texas, which I wouldn't send a dog to. <laughs> and then a wonderful place that again changed my life. Anyone ever heard of Fort Valley State College, Fort Valley, Georgia? Anyone ever heard? It's a part of the state system, uh, the University of Georgia state system. It is a 99% predominantly black college in a 95% black town 
halfway to Macon, Georgia from the Alabama state line. I was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> Went in and had one of the most marvelous experiences of my life because the people who sent their kids there, those moms and dads and their brothers and sisters were struggling like hell to get one of those kids through college for the first time. And they came from really bad, you know about separate but equal in the South, those old high schools that were crap that the black kids got supposedly graduated from. And they went to Fort Valley State College and they were at like ninth grade level instead of senior. And that, at that college we took them from ninth grade to passing the senior exam that every person that graduates at the University of Georgia has to pass. It was an incredible experience. Loved it. Everybody should be a minority sometime. You know what? You'll know what it feels like. Because no matter how nice people are, there are always those that are not, and the fakes. And there, you can tell the difference in two seconds, whether they're genuine human beings or not. And those people helped me. And I was one of them. And I would still be there, except for that man got elected president, Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and he said we were that the deficit was out of control. Have you heard this before? And that the debt was outrageous, and that special programs for minority institutions had to be cut because there was no money for that sort of waste. Last hired, first fired. And so what did my boss come and say? He said, hey, we would love to have you back next year, but there is no funds for a third science teacher, so why don't you go get a PhD and go back to college? So I went to the Florida Institute of Technology and worked on a uh, PhD there. And once I finished all the coursework, a doctorate in, uh, in microbiology uh, a PhD means you have to do original research that no one has ever done before and publish a dissertation. Well, it's very hard to come up with an idea or something no one has ever done before. You know what most people do? Your major professor, after you're all done, says, okay, what's your idea? And you come in and he says, well, where are you going to get the $72 million to do that? <laughs> and then you, he says, go back and come up with another idea. When are you going, how are you going to live long enough to do that? You go back and come up with another one. And after about six weeks, they wear you down to where you're just blubbering putty. You know? <laughs> I don't know. You see all those dissertations over there other people have done? Well, computer and math techniques are better. Scientific uh, uh, design is better. Go find one that interests you and do it better. You know what I said? I have a problem. I said, no. He said, what'd you say? I said, no, I'm not redoing somebody else's stuff. And he said, well, then what are you going to do? And I said, can you give me a hint? <laughs> and he said, well, you can go where they do original research in microbiology. How's your French? I said, I got thrown out of French class because the French teacher said it. I heard her ear. <laughs> he said, so I guess that the Belgian Institute of Tropical Medicine and the Institute Pasteur in Paris, that's out. I said, yep. And he said, Harvard. I said, yeah, like I get in the heart. <laughs> he said, okay, Berkeley. I said, that's harder to get into than Harvard. <laughs> And he said, University of Miami, School of Tropical Medicine. And I said, private school, hundreds of thousands of dollars. He said, well, that leaves the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, or the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. I said, Atlanta? Hmm, I just left Georgia. I know Georgia. I'll go to Atlanta. So I loaded up my U-Haul, and I drove to Atlanta. And I walked into the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, which at that time had 19 buildings, 6,000 researchers. It's in charge of maintaining hospitals and new microbes and uh, all sorts. And I walked into the personnel office and I said, 
I have a master's in microbiology. Do you have any openings for technicians? And the lady said, yes, we have 26 technicians open for a master's.